Good morning. We will continue with our effort to understand the arithmetic uh, systems in uh, most of the digital systems. Uh, we have so far seen the generalities about the uh, systems which allows you to do all arithmetic operations like adder, subtractor or multiplication or division. Today, we shall start looking into uh, having completed the kinds of adders which we can implement. Uh, please remember any of the choice of a adder circuit or adder, uh, adder subsystem is decided by three important features which are decided by VLSR requirement. Uh, necessarily they are the speed of the uh, uh, operation you want, then the power which you can tolerate to consume and finally, of course, the area which this particular system will occupy on silicon. Based on these three, we have discussed which kind of adders can be used when uh, depending on these three parameters and uh, we have also seen that many of the uh, circuits which we used in adders have multiple advantages in some cases, uh, some are better when the bits are higher, some are better if they are smaller, some are better if there is only speed is the criteria or some are very, very good if they are very low power like say current mode circuits. Now, we will go to the next and the final version of uh, our arithmetic which we say multipliers. Multiplier is most important operation in many of the uh, real life systems and uh, the way multiplier op operation occurs it basically requires some kind of uh, generating partial pr uh, products and then using them then using adders to add them out. So, let us see wh what is exactly what the multipliers are and what are their options available for us to actually implement. So, this talk of multiplier I will talk about briefly about introduction which probably I did. Then we will talk about arithmetic operations, types of multipliers, individual multiplier circuit performance and the finally, we will look into Booth's algorithm which is the most important multiplier operation these days in most of the digital hardware. Uh, finally, we will just show you since uh, any operation in the multiplier requires addition and shifting, we will quickly see a one or two circuits of a barrel shifter which allows you to data to bits to flow uh, shift towards either left or right and these are called barrel shifters and finally, we will make you some comments uh, and then I may provide you a list of references. Now, types of multipliers which are required in any digital hardware are of two kinds. One of course, we, we all know are is called fixed point multipliers. Uh, among the fixed point multiplier, the most popular one is the integer multiplication and uh, of course, it can also have decimals, uh, it can have fractional multiplication, but anyway any fractional number can be handled same way as the integer numbers and therefore, they only need uh, some addition and shift operations to do fixed point multiplication. The other possibility of course, is the floating point multiplier in which the functions are represented as 2 to the power or 10 in case of decimal 10 to the power numbers. They use as fixed bits for sign, exponent and mantissa. Uh, for example, a single precision floating point number is generally represented in 32 bits which has 1 sign bit, 8 exponent bits and 23 mantissa bits. So, for example, it can be written as minus 1 to the power s which is the sign bit into f which is essentially your exponent uh, your uh, mantissa bits and 2 to the power e e stand for the exponent bits. So, let us look into the easiest of uh, multiplication uh, which we see normally in any operation in decimal and now here it is something a binary multiply multiplication shown to you. Let us say I want to multiply a number which is a multiplier is 1 0 0 or rather I should have said the other way the upper ones are always called the multiplicand and the lower ones is multiplier, but does not matter it is only a matter of definition. So, if this is your multiplicand just reverse the two issue name. So, 1 0 0 1 is 9 and 1 1 0 is 8 plus 4 plus 13. Okay. So, we like to see if I multiply 9 by 13 uh, what is the number I am going to get say. Okay. So, with this on the thinking let us start 1117 should be our answer. So, the way we do it we multiply take this multipliers first bit multiply it to the each bit of a multiplicand and write then here and then shift for the next bit multiplication and write down the parts these are all called partial products 
we keep writing partial products uh, for each bit of multiplier and then finally, we add uh, vertically to get this number 111011 and since this number is around 117. So, we know basically what we did we first figured out that among the multiplier bits how many bits are you have available whether it is a signed bit or unsigned bit. Then you have a multiplicant by how many bits it has and then we start multiplying from the first multiplier LSP to the multiplier multiplicants numbers and keep generating partial products and then finally, vertically we shall. Please remember every part uh, second bit we actually shift to the left and then we add the vertical lines. So, that we get the sum this is standard multiplication even in decimal. So, we use the same thing. So, traditionally for example, uh, just for the sake of this there are two things we are doing in the case of multiplication. We are first evaluating the partial products and then accumulation of shifted partial products what we call sum is then created. Now, example is uh, 1100 is 1210 this is the multiplicand and 1001 is 5 in decimal and the multiplication in decimal is 60 we know very well. So, if I do the same thing 1 into 000, 0, 0 uh, then 0 into 0 and then 1 into 0 1 1 0 and finally, I start uh, doing accumulate uh, please remember every partial product we shift and then finally, after completing all partial products we add vertically to create 0 1 1 1 1 0 0 which is nothing but decimal 60. So, basically what we did binary multiplication equivalent to a logical and operation one can see 1 dot 0 what sort we did or 0 dot 1 we did. So, these are essentially a binary multiplication is equivalent to a logical and operation. So, the step 1 consists of logical ending of multiplicand and relative position of a multiplier bit. Each column of the partial product must be added and carry if any generated should be passed on to the next column. So, this is a typically what all of us uh, been aware of in case of decimal as well as in case of binary numbers. Now, before I start ahead maybe I will give you a class of multipliers which are popular in the digital hardware systems and uh, the choice of course, of any system requirement is as I keep saying all the time speed throughput area these are of course, VLSI uh, requirements or system requirements and the finally, one of the major requirement in many of the uh, uh, digital hardware system is how many bits you should continue to work on uh, which is essentially say numerical accuracy how much accurate functions or uh, how many uh, the number you want to have finally. For example, uh, 0 0.00000999901 how is that is what that is or 0 0.0001 is good enough is your choice and depending on the accuracy you provide one may have to decide which kind of system you will require. Typically, there are three kinds of multipliers uh, basic operations possible one is called serial the other of course, is parallel and the third and if not the most important being is the serial parallel. Uh, here are the three multipliers shown to you here uh, here is a circuit which does the serial multiplication. For example, here you have a some kind of a circuit which uh, essentially I already said there is a reset requirement. This is my adder, this is my uh, shift register or register which actually can give me de desired delay, one bit delay in this case, it may be a flip flop which runs through a clock okay, and you have a clear signal as well. So, when you give re reset, this clears the flip flop. Now, the way it operates that you have two numbers x and y to be multiplied. So, you and them out and uh, this output uh, if there is a last carry coming from the flip, initially the carry will be 0. So, the output of this flip flop is cleared. So, it is a 0 plus this and you generate the first partial product. Then this partial product uh, you pass on to this register in the first bit. In the next bit please remember I am uh, actually feeding this output back to the input okay, to this which is the adding the partial sum. The last partial product should be added to the next one by one bit shift. So, okay, this is what is going to be done. So, every time after one clock cycle whatever is available in the LSB on this register here will be transferred back through this to the adder. Now, the next bit will appear with the last partial bit 
the new carry which would have been generated here is now fed back last carry and the process run, runs through. The advantage of serial multiplier is obvious that you have only one adder requirement even if there are 16 bit or 32 bit or 64 bit operation to be performed. However, the disadvantage can be obvious that if you have a large number of bits to be multiplied obviously, one clock cycle only one bit operation is performed. So, if there are n bit numbers n clock cycles will be required to generate the full multiplier output. So, it may be relatively slower, but it is much less hardware intensive compared to others. For example, uh, here is another one which essentially shows a serial parallel multiplier. Essentially, you put all the bits simultaneously together create partial products in this. All that we do is between the two adders since you need a carry out you provide one bit delay here which is essentially a register. And, uh, that provides you the last carry and then the it this process keeps continuing uh, ahead. So, it, it does not say that it is uh, it will be very very fast though this operation will be simultaneously done. So, the one AND gate delay is only required. However, 3 bit delays of the delay part will be certainly required before an output is there. Though it is faster than the serial multiplier it is certainly not our case that it is the very very fast as we would have wished to. In general therefore, the one of the cell of this is essentially called the uh, serial pipeline architecture in which essentially you provide data as well as the output partial from, from each of them for the next this uh, in after a clock delay. And uh, please remember if this chain of delays are provided the way it is shown here it does not really delay very much because once the pipeline is full every clock cycle you have a data as we said in earlier pipeline circuits. So, here is the first add and shift multiplication operation which is the most common principle of any adder circuit. I am showing you here a parallel adder shown here as the block. You have a parallel adder which is shown here which receives the data from the multiplicand register. For simplicity right now I only taken a 3 bit data 101 which is essentially uh, 5 and uh, you have another multiplier register here which stores the multiplier which is 4 here 100. So, now what we do is uh, we actually have th all 3 bits parallelly fed to this parallel adder 1 2 3 here. Then we have a accumulate register here which is 3 whatever bits you have plus 1 you need here. So, it is a because last carry has to come here. So, this is 4 bit register here for the 3 bit data and the it receives the data as the output from the parallel adder. However, initially it is cleared and after every clock cycle all these 4 bits which you are showing here or return to the input of the parallel adder. So, you have 4 bit coming from here, 3 bits coming from here and the eighth of course, is the control bit which is coming from the multiplier register the LSP part. So, the idea is in this adder circuit is add shape register multiplication is that this mode control m uh, signal here if it is 1 here then we say addition operation is performed by a parallel adder if this re is received 0 here it does not do any add operation only every clock cycle shift operation will be performed. So, please remember whether you do addition or you do not do addition every clock when the new data appears the shift has to be performed. So, the way it is the circuit shows load multiplicand in multiplication register as we said here we load 101 multiplicand register and load multiplier uh, multipliers number in the multiplier register. LSP of multiplier register please remember LSP of multiplier register is essentially is taken out as the mode ok as the mode value m. So, please remember initially this is 0 when next clock when 0 comes out this will receive m 0 next when it further shifts another 0 may come. So, no add operation, but when this 1 will come out there will be an add operation here. So, please remember every clock this will shift to the right and when you shift to the right this bit will move out and the last bit which comes out acts like the mode control value. Okay. 
So, load accumulant register and then we initially as I said load accumulant register is already initially cleared okay. and whenever the multiplication uh, accumulation register receives any addition it stores the new data and then it shifts the operation and gives whether m is 1 or 0. Please remember again I will give example a little later after every add or no add operation accumulator and multiplier shift register does a right shift operation under clock control because the next bits of multiplier and multiplicator will be now in question to operate. This creates change in LSB of a multiplier register and which means that one has new value of mode control signal m. The new mode signal again decide whether adder should start addition of bits of accumulator register with multiplicand register or f m is 0 it does not. This process is continuous as many times as number of bits of the multiplier register in our example one will have 3 shifts and add or no add operations because we are using 3 bits. So, let us look at the example here initially you have 100 0 0 and 101 0 1 as the operation. So, we start with initial uh, accumulator register with 0 0 0 0 then the other multiplier register has 1 0 0. Since the last bit here is mode uh, signal 0. So, we expect that the parallel operator parallel adder does not add any do any add operation. However, as we said even if we do not do any add operation or we do add operation shift 1 bit on the right is necessary every clock. So, we shift this data 0 0 0 of course, we add if the since this this will move ahead the blank one is now added 0 automatically and now 1 0 0 will shift to 0 1 0 and now mode is again 0. Since mode mode control signal is still 0 and which is returned to parallel adder mode control there is still no add operation required by now, but we still have to shift this data. So, we do another shift operation once again. So, you have 4 zeros again and 0 0 1, but now mode is 1. So, since mode is 1 the mode control signal 1 will start the multi uh, adder operation. So, you have a multiplicand which is 1 0 1 and now that is added with this 4 bits 0 0 0 0 plus multiplicand which is 0 1 0 1 and the addition of this is 0 1 0 1 and that is then 0 1 0 1. 0 0 1, but since we have already done an addition operation this is the status of accumulant register this is the multiplier register. However, every add or no add operation needs shift. So, we shift the data on the right. So, you get 0 0 1 0 1 0 0, but the next time you see m is now 0. So, no add operation is required. However, again the data will be uh, since they already all the 3 bits are over no more shifts are required. So, you get 0 0 1 0 1 0 0. So, if you write this number 1 0 1 0 0 which is your output if you see very clearly 101 is 5 1 0 0 is 4 in decimal multiplication is 20 which is 1 0 1 0 0. So, this is the easiest of multiplication operation which one can perform in the normal uh, serial kind of uh, registers which we have. The advantage as I keep saying in this kind of uh, you can see you, ne you need one adder and two registers and uh, one accumulant register to perform. The only thing is as many bits you have as many times you will have to shift and that means that many clock cycles you have to go through before the final operation final result is available in some of this accumulated and multiplier register area. So, it is a much uh, less hardware intensive, but comparatively slower comparatively slower. The this another operation which we will like see parallelly to be done add multiplier operation uh, add uh, shift operations multiplying uh, large number of bits. Uh, one technique which we often use in this case is to find out how is this multiplication can be performed. So, let us say I have two numbers okay, which shows x is equal to x i 2 to the power i y i 2 to the power y j 2 to the power j as the y number and the product is x into y. I will do this again a um, little more detail, but just to give you x i 2 to the power i 
phi j 2 to the power j sum of all the bits. And uh, if we want to find the product, then it is x i y j 2 to the power i plus j. And uh, if we put k as the product, this term x i x i y j is p k, then k is equal to 0 plus m plus n minus 1 p k 2 to the power k, i plus j is k in our case. So, in that case, this is the product which you get. So, each p k 2 to the power 2 to the power k gives the position and p k is the partial product. So, if you have n by n multiplier needs n into n minus 2 full adders. So, please look at a simple adder multiplier cell. You have 1 x uh, sorry this is your x and this is your y. So, the first AND gate gives me partial product of x y. If you are the if this is not the first adder then you will require a carry. If it is this it can be half adder because you do not need initial carry. So, the output of an AND gate which is x y is transferred to this adder. If it is initial first cell then the initial p also a partial product is 0. So, a partial product is does not exist, so, but if not naturally it may have for the next one. So, p is also inputted here, carry is also inputted here, the partial whatever is the partial product x y for this we create here x i y j. Then we add create output carry output product and please remember this is my x and this is my y, uh, this is my input carry, this is my output carry and this is my initial product for the last case and then the new product is this one. This will then become the new input product and the next x and y will appear and this process will continue. So, if you look at it since the first one where you receive first x and y you do not have any carry to generate. So, those places where that happens you do not need any full adder, you may need half adder. Please remember half adder is a less hardware intensive, less number of gates and also is relatively faster. So, you need n into n minus 2 f h full adders n half adders and obviously, uh, for each of this uh, n into n square. So, n square and gates to create all partial products. For the worst case delay, one can say if tau g is the worst case adder delay for this block then 2 n plus 1 tau g is called the worst case delay of this kind of multiplier. Okay. Typically, uh, if you would 4 bit multiplier partial products if you see let us say I have 2 numbers multiplicand is x 0, x 1, x 2, x 3 multiplier is y 0, y 1, y 2, y 3 represented by these 2 numbers. Then we do partial product y 0 into x 0, y 0 into x 1, y 0 into x 2, y 0 into x 3 and then we repeat with y 1, y 1 into x 0 and so on and so forth. And then all these partial products are added, uh, these columns are added x 0, y 0 transfers here, then x 1, y 0 plus x 0, y 1 is transferred as sum of these and we keep doing. So, here is only one term, then two terms, then three terms, then four terms, five terms. The way we operate is whenever we get this first term next time we actually will add this up and then we only add this one. When this happens we would have already have added these two in the same operation, we would have done in the next this operation and the finally, in the generation 4 we will do fourth operation. So, the method is repeated product availability in the earlier game can be reused as I show product input and then new x and y can be added every now and then in the same column and new product sum can be obtained. The first and the foremost multiplier uses which uses this algorithm which shown here which is simple uh, algorithm uh, is, is due to credited to Boyd Woolley multiplier which is an algorithm for two's complement multiplication. It adjusts partial product to maximum regularity of multiplication array, moves partial product with negative signs to the last steps and also adds negation of partial product rather than subtract. Please remember no negative number, no subtractors as probably we want to use. So, we can do it by actually creating the do some negation negative adds as we call instead of using a subtractor circuit. Okay. Now, I will before we go to Bouvali circuit which is shown which is a standard array multiplier. Let me again do some little bit of maths once again which is not very difficult, but just to say you which is used in Bowali multiplier. 
let us say x is a multiplicand and y is the multiplier and both numbers are represented as their complement two's complement numbers. Then x is equal to can be written as please remember how x can be now written is minus x n minus 1 2 to the power n minus 1 and then sum of i is equal to 0 n minus 2 x i 2 to the power i. This is the two's complement method of representing numbers. Similarly, y can be represented as minus y n minus 1 2 to the power n minus 1 plus j to the power j equal 0 to n summation of n to the n minus 2 y d to the and we know the product term is x into y. Now, if we do this, okay, if we do this, we rewrite these terms. Let us see how we rewrite. We take the products. Uh, remember there are two terms in x and two terms in y. So, the x y will produce four terms. So, p is x n minus 1 y n minus 1 2 to the power 2 n minus 2. Then you have i is equal to 0 j is equal to 0 summation for i and summation for j up to n minus 2. Then the partial product x i y j 2 to the power i plus j. Now, you have two more terms because there is a minus x n minus 1 2 to the power n minus 1 and minus y n minus 1 2 to the power n minus 1. So, those terms will also get added now uh, multiplied. So, there will be two more addition terms. The first is minus x minus n j 0 is this that is x into y now y into x and the power will be 2 n plus j minus 1 to n plus i minus 1. Now, this essentially means that these two terms are first two terms are going to be added. However, the last two are subtracted. We will not like therefore, any subtractor to be used. Please remember subtractor require additional hardware. So, we do not want to do any subtracting operations. So, what we do is we do negative addition as I keep saying and therefore, we represent these negative numbers in this format. This is the format. Please remember uh, 2 to the power some number when I say it actually gives you for example, let us say let me tell you what I am try, trying to say. If I have a number 1 0 1 1 0, what I am essentially saying is 2 to the power 0 into 1 sorry 0 into 1 plus 1 into 2 to the power 1 plus 1 into 2 to the power 2 plus 0 into 2 to the power 3 plus 1 into 2 to the power 4. So, every bit position here, here, here essentially gives me the 2 to the power coefficient there. So, if I say I am here and I want to subtract something or this, I can move my subs add by this position and if I do shift the position, I am actually doing the essential equivalent of a subtractions. So, this method of actually doing subtractions through a negative number can be represented as minus x n minus 1 y j n plus j minus 1 x n minus 1 minus 2 n minus 2 plus 2 to the power n minus 1. Please remember this is 2 to the power n minus 1 minus of 2 to the power n minus 2 j is equal to 0 n minus 2. Similarly, I can write for y uh, minus y uh, term which I said the minus y n minus 1 n minus 2 can be rewritten in the same form is y n minus 1 2 to the power 2 n minus 2 plus 2 to the power n minus 1 i is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x j 2 to the power n plus i minus 1. So, I can write these two terms in this formats. I have these two terms are anyway positive terms and therefore, now we have an interesting situation that we can then only need uh, positive operations or add operations in this case and 2 to the power numbers essentially the shift operation. Shifting this is the shift operation. Typically uh, array multiplier shown here, if you see here is a typically array multiplier shown here. These are all y's. Uh, y 0's, y 1's, y 2's, y 3's. Okay. Then each vertical line is x, say this is x 0, this is x 1 which is not shown in uh, each gate receives x 0, x 1, 
x 2 x 3. Similarly, you need x 2 again you will need x 2 you will need x 3 x 3. So, there is this x is essentially traveling diagonally each x is diagonally whereas, y we are taken as horizontal lines. So, the what it does is the first partial product is x 0 y 0 which is your z 0. The next partial uh, term can be created by x 0 times y 1, but you need now this addition with x 1 y 0. So, this is x 1 y 0 is coming from here x 0 y 1 is coming from here and since it is the first time you are doing an addition operation there is no carry available therefore, a half adder is good enough and if that happens the together half adder creates z 1, but now it generates carry. For the next uh, this you get x 2 same way and now this uh, whichever you carry you are generated with the this two numbers plus this x 0 y 3 y 2 numbers can be again is, it will not have any carry because this is the first time appearing. So, you need half adder. So, one can see from here the last x wherever x 0 is appearing you actually need half adders but whenever x 1 y 1 or x 2 y ahead you will require full adders for all those operations. Here again you see there is no full adder requirement because there is no additional x or y coming from this side. So, no additional carry because already one only there is this term is not occurring here. So, you need does not you do not need any carry inputs here. So, you need half adders here. So, typically what you are doing is successive creation of products and some through full adders is transferred to the next bit. So, you can see this is the total addition going through this uh, whatever is added here is now added with this whatever is added here is now added with this with half adder you get the z 3 by same logic you get addition of uh, these the vertical lines and you get z 0, z 1, z 2, z 3, z 4, z 5, z 6. Okay. Now, of course, the last carry which will generate will be your z 7. Now, if you see uh, the kind of operations you may have to perform for subtractor or minus values can be shown through there. There are five kinds of cells or block cells which you use in a Bohr volley multiplier. The first one of course, is the generation of x i y j term. This is x i, this is y j simple AND gates. This is block cell 1. Then you may require x i bar y j. This is subtraction kind of requirements if you see then you may require an inverter here. Okay. This is block cell 2. Then if you see this another cell you may require is your x i y j you create an x i y j term. You have the last sum which is coming which is what full adder will give it may receive a carry may generate a carry and the final sum out which is what that full adder circuit which you are seeing there you can see. The other one is you may require x bar or y bar kind of things uh, x, this is x bar y and same operation as this you require. And finally, you may require uh, some kind of an x or equivalent for example, in the final adders this is nothing but x i y j the complemented is x j x i bar complement of this is y j bar. So, this is x bar x i y j plus x bar y j bar plus carry this kind of operation can then lead to an x or x naught kind of operations. So, these are the four blocks which are normally you will find in a um, Bawali multipliers if we see carefully these four figures five figures you can see from here in this multiplier we need to use complement generator and gets to get partial products and full adders to do additions. So, these are the only three gates which we probably will require three kinds of system you will blocks you will require to do a multiplication to save an area and also to improve speed an m by bit multiplier is always arranged in an array which is what this slide is showing. You can see this is x y array has been done. However, a better arrangement is also possible okay, and which is shown in my next slide. 
you can see from here actually I, I am not it is exactly same it is not different. So, only thing why I am showing you is the place what is the kind of delay you are going to get let us say you are m by m or uh, m by n uh, this. So, this is same as x 0 y 0 then x 1 y 1 x 0 y kind of thing we are doing as we did. So, the path is this, 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 this and this. Please remember the path is this, 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 this. I remember I please tell me this is the critical path of the circuit. Okay. So, if you look at the delays associated with the critical path, critical path I repeat is coming like this. So, you require all four adders. Okay. So, you have a n minus 1 uh, kind of full adders uh, okay, only uh, some operations will be required. So, you have n minus 1 t sum because uh, please remember when we are performing this operation the other operations are simultaneously done in the earlier cycle. So, you do not need to know this. So, you have only n minus 1 operation every since x and y are created simultaneously. So, you have only one AND gate delay and then you have a carry path this is what I was trying to show you a carry path. So, you have m minus 1 plus m minus 2 carry for x and y I mean for the world this is one is vertically down one is horizontally down. So, it is the delay is associated with m minus 1 plus m if this is of course, m cross n carry. So, this is the net multiplier delay. I remember I may tell you again the delay is essentially from this path. This is the time delay I evaluate. Since, uh, as some of the partial product do not need carry, so hardware can be reduced as I keep saying only half, half adders are sufficient. A better arrangement for the same which is shown here, you know this is my x which is travelling vertically down this is my y, this is my AND gates which receives x and y here at this AND gate. This is my adder which can be mostly full adder in case the carry appears otherwise if a half adder if there is no carry appears. Now, this is my output carry, this is my initial partial product which is then added to next par uh, partial products uh, this and keep generating the new one. So, if I keep a array of 4 by 4 in this fashion, you can see from here this is my x sorry uh, and this this is how diagonally I am passing x and y okay. and uh, please remember these are my x and these are my y slightly shown in a better fashion and the product is traveling in a instead of product traveling vertically actually in my this circuit is product is traveling in the and get which is going to the adder is essentially looked into this directions. So, this is x y with the last this p z p comes initially of course, this is 0. So, you it keeps doing. So, if you can see using this kind of arrangement which is shown here the multiple which is same if it is m minus 1 n minus 2 carry n minus 1 t sum plus t and is the net delay which is this is same as what I have shown and uh, one can see from here that uh, delay can be minimized uh, delay will obviously increase if the array size is larger that means if you have 8 bit by 8 bit multiplications or 16 bit by 16 bit multiplication the multiplier time will keep increasing. So, the adder part does not really increase adder part does not really add substantial this please remember this is m plus n kind of things, but this is only n kind of things. Uh, in general some time is not that high compared to this product of this. So, this essentially dominates over this term and time of course, is very very negligible. So, we have seen earlier in our carry save operations earlier in adder things. We know the carry save adder has the biggest advantage we know about it. It is little faster for the simple reason that carry save adder allows you to do 3 bits addition first and generating 2 terms C and S. The S essentially is the sum of those uh, bits x, y and z for example and uh, without taking carry into consideration 
and the carry term c is generated without taking the sum into consideration and then we add c and s uh, with the or any other initial carry if you are to with a simple c l a or any uh, normal full adder to generate your uh, carry save operations uh, full adder adder. Now, and we said since it does not propagate carry nor it has to look ahead the carry we it has it is the fastest adder. So, the same circuit which we discussed earlier instead of using the uh, normal adder we can use at least those please remember I have already shown you the critical path in my circuit there. So, those full adders which are in the critical path to derive the time at least those should be uh, utilized using carry save adders. So, you can see these are the carry save adders. Uh, these are called vector merge for the simple reason that here the actually you are adding generating the of course, please remember first one will be or can be always half adder if there is no carry generation. So, the way we operate here in the uh, carry save adder 2 is addition and then the third is added here 2 is addition and the third is added here we keep doing this operation 3 3 2 3 2 operations and can generate z 1 z 2 z 3 this is my x then these are my y which are fed here. Now, this is 4 by 4 carry please remember the critical path is all that matters to me uh, for the worst case delays and therefore, the multiplier delay is n minus 1 t carry now okay, because there is no carry propagations except for the actual carries which are required for the next stage one carry only you can see 4 plus 3 7 this is 4 3 t carries are only required plus this only 3 t carries plus merge time merge time is essentially in which all z's are parallelly available please remember these are uh, parallelly available to you ok. So, you have t merge and of course, and get to generate uh, x y terms. So, a carry save multiplier has half a multiplier cell full adder multiplier cell and there are among the half adder full adder some of them are carry saves and the others are these are called vector merging. The same uh, figure can be little better way shown here uh, these are x s these are y s okay. and you can see three terms x 3 y 0 y 1 create c and s the s is now transferred to the next cell with the la, then x 2 y 0 y 1 is transferred here and then it receives these two numbers and then generate another two numbers and diagonally passes back there. And since it simultaneously passes from this side from this side from this side uh, this is called vector merging and therefore, the delay essentially is what I have just now discussed. So, they are half a multiplier cell, they are full multiplier cell, they are vector merging cells. Please remember you can use all carry save adders which may do, but some of them in the last circuit if you see these need not be one carry save because anyway I am sorry they are all carry save they need they are not the ones in the critical path because they are simultaneous I am very sorry what I said these are full adders same carry save, but these are the only ones which will transmit the data at the end therefore, in the critical path. So, only the critical path delays are of relevance which this receives this. The other possibility of a generating a multiplication is using what is called as a valis tree. We know in a tree operations uh, any tree operation reduces the depth of adder chain we still use carry save adders. So, you have 3 input a b c which produces 2 outputs y and z c and s in last case and we create these terms. We know this we have already done this carry save operations. How do we do a valid tree multiplication or this? So, first thing we do is in your multiplier let us say these are the position 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 bits this is the first multi uh, partial product terms x 0 y 0 x 0 y 1 kind of things. Then this is again x 0 y 1 x 1 y 1 kind of thing and there are 4 4 by 4 product I am showing you. Now, what do you do is we know this is the operation these are of course, zeros here. Okay. 
So, we instead of writing in this format, we write for each position 1 0 to 6, we write bit position, we write whether 1 or 0 exist. Okay. So, for example, this 4 4 first 4 will exist because of this, but the next 4 exists from 1 to 5, okay. 1 to 5, uh, 1 to 4. So, it is 1 to 4. Okay. So, this is 1 to 4. Okay. Then, uh, you can see from here, the next is from 2 to 5. So, from 2 to 5 and then from it is 3 to 6. So, 3 to 6. So, the first we write uh, for each of them whether see if we go in this column this has to be added, this has to be added, this has to be added. So, we now start looking for actual additions. We say okay, in the first bit position only 0, next you have only 2, then in the third you have 3, okay. in the fourth you have 4, okay. in the fourth you have again 3, in the fifth you have 2 and in the sixth you have 1. Okay. Yeah, just inverted it nothing big same thing rewritten in this form. Now, what we do in the first after we uh, put it this is called the first stage operation to create the tree the next stage is uh, in the first stage itself circle the last two ones. For example, for the third and fourth you circle the last two. So, if that means if you do this addition it will create only one numbers here okay. and then you will have 3 3 two kind of thing can be operation can be created. Okay. Then it will be 3 3 3 all 3 operations and then we can see in the next. In the next operation if we see therefore, if 1 2 of course, this is also a 2 operations or could have been written directly here, but so we look into second position there will be 3. So, you create for the 2 then you will create 1 out of that and then 1 plus 1 is 2. Uh, this we already created 2 plus 1, 2 plus 1, 2 plus 1 this. So, if you rewrite this it becomes of course, this is 0 we take. So, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 since 2 to 2 operation is very simple to add. So, you are partially doing your summing here and bringing at the end only sum of the 2. Uh, by using this kind of thing we can reduce substantially hardware can be saved a uh, substantial saving in hardware the operation will be very high speed you will see this and the delay will be now log log 3 by 2 n. Of course, since it is the kind of operations you are performing the uh, it will be a irregular structure not an array universal structure and therefore, many times the layout becomes very inefficient. Here is the tree multiplier basic concept. So, basically you have a carry save multiplier shown here you have a full adder this is y 0 y 1 and the next is y 2 creates some c and this and add and the next is carry. The last similar adder must have come you will add this. So, now they have 3 bits create this and these 2 and you keep create in a vertical uh, diagonal directions. Here is something which better looking figure which is same as this but slightly better. You have y 0 y 1 fit to y 2 create c i okay, and then this is your s term which is nothing but sum of y 0 y 1 y 2 which is then fed with the carry generated out of this okay, full adder sum partial sum and you add with this to create the new carry a new sum. The next carry is now fed here and create new carry and new sum. So, it is log n multiplier times order of log n uh, is the delay here. Y represent the partial products and x represent this. So, it is essentially trying you are doing time multiplexing you know you are trying to save some par operations are because they are carry save operations you no know, carries are required in the self operations and these are transferred to the only next stages and uh, the next sum simultaneously is made available to you. So, this means using this tree multiplier concept one can save the time uh, that is high speed. The number of adders now required will be only 4 to do this operations and uh, 6 bit operations as we see and uh, this is therefore, less in hardware high speed, but you can see if I lay out this block it will be very difficult. 
Now, if you look at your multiplier any time very carefully, okay, what is the problem with normal multipliers? If you see a normal multiplier, you have partial sums you are going to create depending on your multiplier and multiplicand kind of numbers, it can be find that there may be large number of ones available to you. And if you have a ones, those many mean terms, those very product, partial products will be available. For example, I may show you what I am saying. If I have a number 1, 1, 1, 1, and I multiply it by 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. You can see from here, I can create this so many terms 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, then the next one is 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, then again 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, again 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, and finally, again 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. So, if you see an operation except for these two, which is shown here, every other partial product you are creating. Larger the number of partial products you have, for example, in this each of this, for example, here you have 3 ones, you have 3 ones. Okay. So, the larger the ones availability in your partial products, larger will be the operation of addition and therefore, even if you use carry saves, you can require larger times. However, if I actually convert into say let us say something like this for the sake of completeness, then I have only two terms associated with this multiplier 1 once the rest terms I need not even write because these are the terms anyway going to be zeros. So, I will only do addition of two terms which is very fast. This is essentially called a multiplier term is coded or recoded. This is your two's complement number let us say and you recode it into a format which allows you to deduce number of ones and if that happens the number of adders which reduces the number of additions and therefore, it will increase the speed enormously. So, one of the major criteria of any VLS chip as we discussed earlier also is to show that. Uh, now, here is before I go to the actual Boole's algorithm, I may just show you what I am really talking. In Booth's multiplier, we recode two's complement number since we use binary number, we observe that j long sequence of 1s is equivalent to j minus 1 long sequence of zeros. So, replacement of 1s by zeros reduces the partial product terms. This is what is called recoding. Is that word clear? I the sequence of 1s can be converted of sequence of larger number of zeros and therefore, reducing the partial products and since the partial product terms are smaller, the time taken to add them will be also smaller. So, this is basically the principle or basically the need of a recoding and that is what Booth way back in 1900 odd years has first time suggested that this is mathematically possible because of the this law that j long sequence of 1s can be equivalent to a j minus 1 long sequence of zeros and using this theorem, uh, Booth has up, uh, arrived at an algorithm for additions. Now, what is this? It says that Booth recorded uh, recorded multiplier recoded sorry it is not recorded, it is a recoded multiplier examines 3 bits of multiplier. This is a further addix 4, we'll, this is not this is essentially modified kind of thing, but let us see what I am talking about. A Booth re recoded multiplier examines 3 bits of multiplicand and time to determine whether to add 0, minus 1, plus 1, 2 or minus 2 of the rank of the multiplicand. Before we go to this, maybe I will uh, actually discuss the same issue little later, but let us look at the kind of uh, things we do are here. 
uh, before we will come back to this expression little later this one, but uh, okay, just look at the number x is can be written as i is equal to i to uh, some 6 let us say I am using 16 bit numbers 15 x i 2 i minus 1 minus x 0. So, this is very important what I wrote is first to 5, 0 of course, I had taken out. Okay. So, it is x i 2 to the power minus i minus x 0 2 to the power 0. Okay. So, you, if you have this we can remove this term from this. So, we are 16 bit numbers this can be further written as i is equal to 1 to this 8. Now, I divide into this 8 7 7 kind of thing. So, x 2 i minus 1 2 to the power minus i plus 1 i 1 to 7 like this plus minus 2 to i minus 1 and again x to this. If we collect these terms then x can be written as x 2 i minus 1 x 2 i and minus 2 x i minus 1 into 2 to the power minus 2 i plus 1. Now, this is essentially what I am going to do in my evaluations that any number has 3 bit equivalence x 2 i minus 1 x 2 i x 2 i minus 1 uh, minus of that of course, with a minus 2 signs which is equivalent of the x i 2 i to the power minus. Now, this is what essentially we, we know how can we reco we represent the x numbers and before we do ahead let me tell you how do I do the recoding. Consider a positive multiplier consisting of a block of 1 surrounded by zeros. So, it is 0 0 1 1 1 1 1 0 the product is given by m m is the multiplier you want a uh, multiplicand you have and this is your multiplier which can be written as m into 2 to the power 5, 2 to the power 4, 2 to the power 3, 2 to the power 2, 2 to the power 1 in. So, this m in this is 62 m, where m of course, was the multiplicand. The number of operations can be reduced to 2 by just simply rewriting it. 2 to the power 6 is 62 minus 2 to the power 1 is 2, which is 64 minus 2, which is 62. So, now what operations I am performing? Right now I was performing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 operations. Okay. I can now reduce to only 2 operations. This is essentially the basic thinking in recoding. Please remember this number if I recode in this format this 1 1 1 1 0 in this format your larger number of zeros minus this. Please remember 2 to the power 6 will have larger zeros because it is 1 0 0 0 0 kind of term. This 2 will be of course, minus 1 0. Okay. Now, you can see from here this number has most of the zeros. Okay. So, you can see it is the only positional advantage you got it. You only have to do now 2 operations because most of them are 1 only these 2 operations I may have to perform to actually perform this whole multiplication. This is essentially recoding this into this format. Okay. Continuing with our Booth's multiplier operation, uh, it takes values of 0 plus minus 1 minus 2 as we just now said and number of partial product generated are reduced and they are simple multiples of input operand minus 2 y minus y 0 y 2 y if y is the multiplier and x is the multiplicand. Please remember uh, this is a table which will right now I do not want to discuss this table I am coming, coming back to this table again. In a booth multiplier encoding scheme reduces number of stages in multiplication. It performs 2 bits of multiplication at once requires half the stages each stage is slightly more complex than the simple multiplier, but adder and subtractor is, is almost as small and small as fast as normal adders. Okay. Uh, just to give you again the same 2's complement number can minus can be represent like this rewrite 2 to the power something is 3 minus 2 to the power a therefore, minus y can be written in this format. Then we already discussed this earlier it is same representation consider first two term by looking at the 3 bits of y we can determine whether to add x or 2 x to the partial product and I will give an example what I meant. Okay. Even before this 
let me say tell you what I really could ok. The simple booth before we go to the modified one which I started let me first discuss the booth algorithm which is the simple booth algorithm. Booth algorithm involves repeated adding one or two predetermined values of a and s to a product p and then performing rightward arithmetic shift on p. Let us say you have m and r be multiplicand and multiplier and x and y represent the number of bits in m and r. So, the algorithm says determine the values of a and s and the initial value of p all of these numbers should have a length equal to x plus y plus 1. Now, a fill the most I will come to example. So, you will see it fill the most significant bits with the values of m fill the remaining y plus 1 with zeros. For the s fill the most significant bits with the value of minus m in 2's complement notation and fill the remaining y plus 1 with zeros. For the p fill the most significant x bit with zeros to the right of the right of this append the value of r fill the least significant rightmost bit with a 0. I will give an example and I think that will be very clear to you, but before that what is the operation to be performed? Determine the two least significant bit of p if they are 0 1 then do this operation p plus a and ignore always overflow. If these two last bits are 1 0 then do operation p plus s again ignore overflow. If they are 0 0 do nothing use p directly in the next step and if they are 1 1 again do nothing p directly in the next step. So, only if it is 0 1 or 1 0 you do the p plus a or p plus a operation otherwise do not do just move. Now, here is an example I think that will clarify what I said a is 0 0 1 1 and the rest is 0 0 8 bits and the finally, I append a 0 here. S is please remember this is 3 and this is again 4 plus uh, sorry 8 plus 2 4 12 plus 13 13 3 is the 39. Okay. But if it is in the uh, minus numbers then this is minus 3 and this is 4. So, I am actually looking for 4 into minus 3 as my number. Okay. So, initially you have the p is 1 1 0 okay, which is first term perform the loop 4 times. So, first p is equal to 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 add this 0 the last 2 bits of p are 0 0. So, arithmetic right shift since they are 0 0 do not do anything just shift one side. Okay. Now, again we see the last 2 bits are 0 0. So, just shift again. So, you get 0 0 0 1 1 0. Now, the next 2 bits are 1 0. So, do operation p plus s. So, this is your p add s to that and if you do this operation you get this and again shift to the right again this side. Now, we see we see and observe 1 1. So, we see ok 1 1 means against um, the last 2 bits are 1 1. So, no operation to perform only shift. So, this and if this you see this number 1 1 1 0 1 0 1 1 which is nothing but minus 12. So, if I perform this operation I can always create this number. This is our uh, basic idea of booth recording instead of having only 1 or 0 this you can have the number in 1 and minus 1 codes and by doing this we can generate a number in minus itself. I will give you an example before we go this the booth recoding it advantages disadvantage are it depends on the architecture potential advantage might reduce the number of ones in multiplier. In the multiplier that we have seen so far does not save in speed uh, still have to wait for a critical path increase area recoding circuitry and and subtraction. So, a new idea was figured out. Okay. So, what do we do really in the coding part? So, I may actually show you how do I code it as an example before I actually look into what I am really uh, this. Okay, here is my operation. Let us say in 2's complement, I have this 0 0 1 1 0 1 as 13 and 1 1 1 0 1 0 as minus 6. So, I recode the multiplier x. Okay. My initial number is 1 1 0 0 1 0. 
So, the way I recode is the following. The way recoding is done, I think I will go back and show the other slide, but this is to simplify before I go there. For every, the first of course, you leave zeros, but the f next ones, whenever you see 1, just below that put minus 1 and plus 1 in the next bit position. For 0, you put only 0, 0. For 1, minus 1, plus 1. For this 1, minus 1, plus 1. For this 1, minus 1. And then, you just write down the numbers. This is of course, initially was 0, 0 here. So, you say first number is minus 1, 0. The second, please remember second is minus 1 and plus 1, plus 1 and minus 1. This is 0 and 0. This add is minus 1 is 0, minus 1 plus 1 is 0. So, for this, so please remember I am actually doing this operation this operation and this operation. If I do this, I get minus 1 0, minus 1 plus 1 0 0 and finally, 1. Now, booth encoding or recoding as we said essentially says and we will then we will now go back and show what I am talking about is this operation is say do multiplication uh, do do operation which is called minus 2 times the a is the multiplicand and add to that. This is addition of minus 1 a and this is 0. So, just no addition. Now, I will I will come back to this little later once again. Okay. When I come back to this number evaluation. Okay. So, how do I get this path is the following. So, this is how I do. Okay. I have a group of pairs leaving minus 2 minus 1 this and as I said it reduces the number of partial product by half. So, how it is done? It gets read of 3's sequence of 1's in general okay. and I suppose I have that expression with me. Here is that one what I am saying. We can see both simultaneously to some extent. You have x 0 to x n minus 1 as your number in 2's complement. Add x n minus i x i minus 1, which is always added to the LSB extreme LSB side and is always 0. Okay. So, if you see this table, uh, this number, you have 0 1 1 0 1 1 1 0 0 and 1 and this last 0 is appended by me. Okay. Now, what do I do? I said for every 1, I write minus 1 and plus 1. Okay. I do not have to write zeros because zeros do not add. For this one, I write minus 1 plus 1. For this one, I write this. Uh, for this one, I write minus 1 plus 1. For this one, I write minus 1 plus 1. This one, I write this. And if I then add vertically down, so it is minus 1 0, then it is 0 plus 1, minus 1 0, 0 0, minus 1. Now, we know uh, booth encoding or recoding says this is equivalent of minus 2, this is equivalent of 0 1. So, from here now we come back to this. What was the problem in booth re, uh, normal recoding? The normal coding has some difficulty one can see which is not very obvious to many. Okay. In a normal booth simple recoding it may create if you just do the normal recoding as we did earlier, then you may have initial number which has certain number of 1s, but when you recode it, you may have larger number of 1s minus 1 or plus 1 whatever it is. Here is an example, this happens particularly when there is 1s are very sparse. For example, in, in given in a book, this is the number K. K Roy's book, it says that 85 can be a number which is 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 in uh, sign in the uh, 2's complement. And if I booth coding it, this will give me my 0 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 1 minus 1, which essentially means now there are more operations to perform. 1 means there is operation to perform, 0 means no operation to perform. You have only 4 operations here in normal case, here you have 3 plus 3, 6 operations of 1's. So, in case of booth multiple normal booth multiplication, there is a possibility of error in the sense you do not save uh, 
partial product sums actually increase sometimes. Pro in this particularly occurs when there is a sparse ones. If there are large number of ones, any booth recoding will reduce that ones to more zeros and therefore, number of partial products will reduce and this is very very relevant in what we call modified booths recoding. So, in a modified booth recoding what I am going to do is I have I generate I have x 0 to x n minus 1 and I add this append this number 0. I leave this number and look into the first 3 bits from LSB. This is additional LSB plus we are not counting in inspection. So, we say we will start inspecting first 3 bits and using the inspection of x 0, x 1, x 2, I can recode it into y 1, y 0. However, in the booth normal recoding, I would have done x 1, x 0, x 3, x 0 and then there would have been possibility that they may both would have been 0 and 1 alternatively. So, sparsity would have come. So, now what I do is I take the last one once again and now with this, so even if it is 0 or 1 with this it will be taken care and then I will generate another uh, recoded value which is y 3, y 2. I start again with x 4, go to x 6, I create y, y 4, y 5, I start with x 6, go to x 8 and so on and so forth, create y 6, y 7, y, 7, y 8, y 9, things of that kind, all odd numbers, okay, finally. So, you have x 0 to x n minus y is the original number and y 0 to y n minus 2 is modified recode number. You can see we are using a 4 bit uh, radix 4 scheme here, uh, we inspect 3 and every time we inspect 3, 2 bits gets eliminated because common this is there. Now, this is essentially what booths encoding is about or recoding is about. Example here is I have x i 0 0 0 then the recorded bits are 0 0. I will come back the table again and you will see the same thing. This is 0 0 1 the y i y i minus 1 is 0 1 0 1 0 is 0 1 0 1 1 is 1 0 1 0 0 is minus 1 0 1 0 this is code 1 0 0 is 0 minus 1 1 1 0 is 0 minus 1 1 1 1 is 0 0. Now, what the operation we have to perform is called a is your multiplicand. So, how many times this recorded digit times that multiplication has to be done, multiplicand has to be added. So, the actual from 0 0 does an operation of 0, 0 1 does 1, 0 1 does 1, 1 0 does 2, minus 1 0 minus 2, 0 minus minus 1, 0 minus minus 1. Essentially, it says the operation should have this is 0 addition, 0 into a addition. This is whatever is the last this you add 1 times your multiplicand, 1 times multiplicand, 2 times multiplicand, then add minus 2 times means actually subtract kind of thing, minus 1 a times, minus 1 a times, 0 times. This is called booth's encoding table. Okay. Now, if you look at the booth encoding table, in this expression how to get that please come back to slide again. So, for every 1 I represent minus 1 plus 1 minus I, I gave any color because I will not say it this 1 gives blue 1 is plus 1 minus 1 this black 1 is plus 1 minus 1 green is plus 1 of course, zeros are all zeros we not added at all you can write 0 0 if you wish then 1 is plus 1 minus 1 and this 1 is plus 1 and then you add vertically. So, you get minus 1 and of course, 0 is here. So, minus 1 0 then the next test is 0 plus 1 then you have minus 1 0 0 0 minus 1 plus 1 and from the booths table we know minus 1 0 is minus 2 0 plus 1 is plus 1 minus 1 0 is minus 2 0 0 is 2 minus 1 plus 1 is minus 1 plus 1 is 2. So, I have I know what operation to perform when I convert the recorded system into this and here is what I will do the same thing which I said earlier can be rewritten i i minus 1 i plus 1 are the 0 0 1 and the kind of operations you perform. Since booth recoding got rid of threes generating partial products is not the that hard because it is only shifting and negating has to be done. This is same thing again explanation is given more detail number of strings of ones in the site end of strings of ones this is called isolated one this means end of strings of ones 
this means beginning of string of ones, end of one string, beginning new ones, beginning of string of ones and continuation of string of ones. The kind of operations add operations you perform has this explanation. In summary, what do we do? Grouping multiplier bits into pairs or orthogonal idea to the booth recoding reduces the number of partial product to half. If booth recoding not used, we have to have been able to multiply by 3 which is hard shift plus this 3 multiple addition to be done. Applying the grouping idea to booth modifies recoding as it is caller encoding. We already got rid of sequence of ones, no multiplication by 3 numbers, just negate shift once or twice and that is the idea. Use higher addicts to reduce number of intermediate addition operands, can go higher you can have radix of 8, radix of 16. Of course, uh, you will have to implement 3 minus 3, 4 minus 4, um, large number of such this per, uh, operations to be performed, but it will be more accurate and sometimes much faster. Recoding and partial product generation becomes more complex then. Of course, it can automatically take care of sign multiplication. A typical booth multiplier uh, is shown here, but before I go now, I will show you the example of that. Here is my example, which I just now was talking to you. Okay. I have an operation which is shown here, multiplicand is 13 0 0 1 1 0 and your multiplier which is x, which is in 2's complement of minus 6 is 1 1 1 0 1 0. So, I recode multiplier x, this is 1 1 1 0 1 0. I again put minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 this and add. So, I get minus 1 0, minus 1 1, 0 0 1 and I know minus 1 0 from booth recoding table is minus 2 a, this minus 1 1 means minus 1 a, 0 0 means 0 a. Having known the operations to be performed, I start looking for the actual things which I want to do. Here is your decimal number 13 into minus 6, you expect an answer minus 78 you want to do this operation of 0 minus a minus 2 a. Okay. Let us say initial product or sum is 0 0 0 0 0, 0 partial product sum we we'll call it. The first operation you want to do minus 2 a and a is please remember multiplicand. Okay. Now, if I do this 2 of this and shift I get 1 0 0 1 0 1 take complement and shift you can get this 1 0 0 1 0 1 and then add since it is 0 this number will remain 1 0 0 1 0 1. Okay. Then shift 2 bits because you have 2, so shift 2 bits 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1. To this now add minus 1 a, minus 1 a by same thing is complement of that is 1 1 0 0 is complement of that. Please take it complement. 1's complement is 1 1 0 0 1 1. Okay. And then append since there were 2 additional number here because of shift you append 0 0 here okay, and add. So, you get 1 0 then 1 and 1 0 1 and 1 0 1 1 1 and 1 0 1 and 1 carry 1. And what we say, since it is overflow, this part is a overflow, so neglect. So, the number which I got is 10110011. Then we have to shift this, the list number by 2 bits, 1111 this, and if I do it and uh, after shift I get add to this 1. So, I get uh, 0, uh, sorry add 0 a to it of course, now add 0, 0 means no addition. So, this is the number 1 0 1 1 1 0 this last two of course, are sign bits 1 0 1 1 0 0 1 which essentially with the sign bit this is 78 with a minus sign. So, what has that booth encoding has done? You can see since booth encoding actually only uses 
those terms which have ones and by en booth encoding or recoding we are reduced the number of ones the net partial product sums required are much smaller you can see in a four step operation in the first of course is recoding one operation then three operations here and two operations here in four five operations i am able to generate uh, multiplying of 13 into even sign bit multiplication before we leave this part okay i may like to show you of course you require booth encoding what kind of circuits we use you need an xor you need two inverters two and gates or an or gate you can say okay and uh, a multiplexer this is is bi bi minus 1 these are the bits which are entering the x i is of course is xor of bi please remember this is bi minus 1 this is bi and this is bi bi minus 1 xor is xi then this addition of this or complement of this is passed as 2 xi and this is directly passed as mi this is what the recording was asking the other part circuit you need is to create partial product generator so yeah you need 3 and gate and xor gate to produce the partial product and uh, you need a modified version you which doesn't use and gates but only muxes 3 muxes then uh, these circuits are taken from madrid's paper in i triple transaction wheels and 1993 so you can see basically you require only few muxes for encoding and decoding encoding and passing the partial products and shift operation because there is every time you are shifting you need shift registers so and it should be able to shift the data left and right so before we leave this part probably the okay the one circuit which i have already shown is efficient booth multiplier which is same as what just now i said this of course is a slide uh, need not worry about adder which we have already taken earlier this is essentially we are looking for let's say carry save has a unit uh, 1 okay unit 1 and compared to this if you look at the speeds for a valence tree you will have 0 0.05 and if you do the other 0 0.05 if you do booth it will be 0 0.001 so essentially power delay product this is essentially a power delay product can be reduced in a booth encoding there are a variety of version carry save multiplier 32 bit uh, is the reference then you use the, if you use tree it will be 120th of that it will be 125th of that and if you use booth encoding further on that it will be 100th of that. So, that is the idea of improving the speed power product of any multiplier. Before we leave to shift power operation the last part of my circuit uh, requirement uh, multiplier requirement is a floating point representation. We know integer operations. So, we also should be able to do uh, some kind of floating point multiplications. Before we go to that let us look at the numbers we can see that typically any number x is represented as minus whatever sign bit plus some integer numbers here before the exponent and then you have uh, e to the power some exponent number in the maintenance cells. So, it is called a 1 bit field for the sign bit, 8 bit field for the exponent. Uh, you may have a bias integers 0 to 255 and you have 23 bit mantissa. So, totally in typically uh, a floating point number is represented in the 32 bit representation which is called single precision which will have for example, 0 bit 8 bits uh, 1 bit for sign uh, 1 do not actually store it uh, you have 1 bit 8 bits for the exponent field and 23 bit for the mantissa field. Okay. So, here is number to show the same thing. This is your number m mantissa is s 1 s 2 s 3 dot 1 plus 0 s 2 in this form. Example minus 0 0.75 in 10 in single precision is half plus 1 by 4. This is can be written in 2's complement and 2's binary minus 1 1 dot 1 2 this. 
if you write this this format 2 to the power 126 minus 2 to the power 127 s is 1 sin bit sin bit exponent is 126 and 127 so can be represented in binary this and mantissa is 1 0 0 all zeros and therefore a number which is shown here in 32 bit is the following this is 22nd mantissa okay then there are uh, exponent bits please remember what did i say you have one sign bit 23 exponent bits uh, sorry 8 bit exponents and 23 mantissa field so this is 23 mantissa bit then 8 exponent bit okay 30 and the last of course is your uh, this is your last zero so 31 this is your sign bit which is shown here so how do i do addition in this uh, first let's say you have a number minus 1.610 in decimal add to this so in decimal what do we do is represent that number in tens numbers and see to it that their decimal points are aligned so both are represented in tens only 10 to power 1 so this can be 0 0.016 into power 1 and this can be 9.99 10 power that and then because this is common we do not have to do anything just add these two terms you get 10.01 into 10 to power 1. Then we normalize the next operation is we normalize. So, what do we mean by normalize? We do not want two decimal numbers uh, bits before uh, decimal should be only 1. So, multi we say it is into 10 so 1.015 then we may round it off how many accuracy you want say for example 1.002 is good enough if I neglect 5. 5 is more than less more than 5 5 or more than 5 we make it 2 or last bit so 1.00 may need to repeat step and 3 if the normalization is after rounding is not correct really not really normalize uh, if you have a double in this is a single precision number any number is represented minus 1 to the power f f into 2 to the power e this is how the uh, i triple 5 754 standing to write a floating point number in single precision which is 32 bit 8 bits of exponents 23 bits of significant and range is 2 to the power 10 plus minus 38 30 and double precision is 64 11 bit exponent 52 bit significant range is 2 to the power this okay. so once we know we can since each is an individual integer number fixed numbers the operation can be independently performed using integer theories and one can do for doing a multiplication compute sign exponent significant normalize shift left right by 1 check for overflow underflow round it and normalize it is identical to the same sign is p s a x x or b s exponent is a b due to bias excess must subtract bias kind of thing significant is a f b f standard integer multiply use valis tree for the addition creating partial products. So, uh, please remember uh, floating point numbers are independently handled in three uh, three this exponent is separately handled multi exponent signs are separately handled and because of that we can gen and put it into a different shift register positions to actually get the multiplier operations. Now, the last but not the least part of this whole circuit is uh, we are keep talking of shifting okay we keep talking of shifting the data to the left a typical shift register uh, based uh, shift reg pass gate based shift register is shown here which allows the data to move to right or left one can see here only pass gates have been used and a buffer of course since you may have to drive the first one is the for the right the second is for no operation and the third one is left so, if you want to move the data from right, so you make this as 1 and let us say this is my a i, no operation means 0, left is not operation. So, this data is appearing here, right shift. So, you can see from here it has gone to the right i minus 1. If you want left, you can see that if I want left, I must go above, I must I want to reach here. So, obviously, I will go up, this is high and since this is high this is transferred. So, left and right data can be transferred 
and no operation can be also. To show you this uh, data wire and control, these are this. This is a 4 bit uh, shift uh, barrel shifter is shown here. There I shown you 2, it is 4, it is identical. Shift 1, shift 2, shift SH1, SH2, SH0 are the 4 shift signals. It can be depending on right and left whether these or these are turned on. Data can be transferred here, data can be transferred here or transferred here depending on which pass gates are switched on. Okay. This can be uh, controlled by a small logic which will allow this to create shifts signals and those shift signals will allow you to create A 0 to go to B 3 or A 0 to go to B 1 or, or vice versa coming down each bits can be repositioned left or right by using this kind of barrel shifter. 4 bits simultaneously can be given they can be put like this or they can be put directly like this. So, obviously, uh, shift register of op shift operations can be easily performed left and right using a barrel shift register. So, we are now seen in a multiplier you need adder you need a shifter. Uh, we are already seen all kinds of adders in our earlier implementation we have today seen all kinds of multiplier possibility we also looked into floating point possibilities and using parallel shifters and those two blocks different kinds of bomb depending on the area power speed and of course the accuracy one can choose different hardware circuits and different hardware circuits will lead to a different performance index and based on that you can choose it and implement any addition adder multiplier in your actual hardware these are the books from where uh, much of my work was taken. Uh, basically, you can for the first level of uh, understanding you can use Rebe's book. There are other two books we all know is Ashrangian West and uh, this I already given my other references to you. Of course, there are many thanks to my students because they are ones who created many of my old slides. These are of course, my many VLS my postgraduate students in VLSI in last 15 to 20 years maybe more than 15 years. Uh, they asked me many things which allowed me to understand better. And uh, of course, there are some good book references. You can see some of the slides from the UC, UC University of California Berkeley course sites due to Rebe and others and their book. Uh, credit to Prentice Hall for allowing it to do that. Then there is a book by Edison Westley, which is one of the very famous old book, Western Ashrangian's Principle of CMOS VLSI Design, which I published in 1994, but still seems to be one of the best system design de device to system design book. Many of the circuits shown here have been taken there. Then there is a book on DSP processors, which is written by Mendesetti Vijay, which is published by Butterworth Heinemann. So, some slides and some data uh, things were taken from this book. And there is a book on compiler arithmetic by Wang, uh, it is John Wiley, it is one of the oldest book in fact. But if you really read classic books, you really understand much more. Okay. And therefore, I recommend those who are looking for advanced VLSI should look for the last two books, uh, last three books very carefully. The other book which you can see is Lars Manumers DSP ICs, which is published by Academic Press. And last but not the least, the very recent book appearing from uh, McGraw-Hill, which is written by Yeo, Kiat Seng Yeo and Kyo Shalrai. Much of the data of power, speed and this have been taken from Kaushal, uh, Kaushik Rai's book and uh, uh, due regards to them. There are many references on number systems, there are references on adders. There are references on, uh, yeah, there are huge numbers. You can see there are lot of number actual this available for multipliers and this. Uh, with this part, uh, we complete the total arithmetic operations for any processor or any hardware in this part of the advanced VLSI course. Some of the problems which I gave during the solve, I will add at the end of them, they will be my model problems as we have already solved them. Some problems I will add to it later which you can solve. 
many times most of these problems can be only solved on uh, what I would say uh, on the using a spice. So, I, you must have at least the initial version of spice if not the advanced if you have cadence tools or uh, synopsis tools or model if you have the uh, mental graphic tools you have a good spice available on it. You can choose any of the hardware shown here for any given technology you can try implementing many of those blocks in your real system design and verify which ones which I actually have given you as an hint to take whether they work. Thank you very much for the day.